Here's a little illustration of how to use Microsoft Excel to carry out Newton's method. I'll be working out example 2 from section 3.8 in our textbook. You can compare what's done in the textbook, which is sort of your pencil and paper by hand method with uh, how it's done in Excel. Take a look at the difference. Up here in this region, I have the function listed that we're applying Newton's method to. I have its derivative listed. Uh, right here, I have the general recursion relation for Newton's method. And in this portion, I have what that relation looks like for this particular function f and its derivative. Down in this area, I'm going to build a table. The first column is going to be the loop number. So it's going to go n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. The second column is going to be the actual value produced by Newton's method. Uh, as done in the solution in the book, uh, they started the first guess of x1 with the value 1. So now what I need to do is down here below x1, I'm going to enter the formula which is running x1 through the recursion relation. In Excel, anytime you're going to type a formula, you always begin with an equal sign. So I simply typed equals here. I need to tell Excel to take this number and substitute it in every place where I see xn in this thing. So you do that in Excel by using references. Once I've typed equals, I can click anywhere else in Excel and it will automatically insert the reference of that location. So in the position in the formula where I see xn, I want c7 to appear. My next symbol is a minus sign. Then I'm going to take xn to the power 6 minus 2. I need to do that in parentheses. Um, you can either click somewhere else to get your reference or you can simply use your arrow keys divided by 6 times xn to the power 5. So the formula that I end up with here has the number in cell C7 right here minus c7 to the power 6 minus 2, that quantity, divided by 6 times c7 to the power 5. If I hit enter, it carries out the calculation. Here I'm going to need a 2. And the beauty of this is if I highlight anything that I want to continue with the same pattern, I can actually hover my mouse near the bottom right hand corner. This bottom right hand corner has what's called an anchor on it. That little dot that you see right at that bottom right hand corner is what's called an anchor. If you hover your mouse right over that you'll see the indicator of the mouse change to like a plus sign. If I click that and drag down what I'm telling Excel to do is to repeat whatever's in that row relative to the location that it gets copied to. So if you take a look at what that means in C8 where I type the formula it took C7 and ran it through the, through the recursion. When I copied that formula to C9, it changed all the C7s to C8s. And you can see that up here in the formula bar, what it did. So in effect, what it does is take whatever is in a particular location, run it through the formula, and put the result in the location below. Take whatever's in that spell, run it through the formula, put the result in the location below, and repeat all the way down the list. So now, how to interpret this? We can interpret it by uh, thinking back on what the formula wanted. They wanted us to, uh, this example wanted us to approximate the root to an accuracy of six or eight decimal places. I can't quite remember, I guess it was probably six. So we can tell whether we've accomplished that goal by comparing each output of Newton's method with the previous output. What we want is for two subsequent outputs to agree up to six decimal places or whatever the desired accuracy was. We see that happens here between five and six. 
So our answer is that output, 1.122462.